Hello and welcome to today's lab. Within your VCL session, navigate to the Government 300 Blackboard course page, and along the left-hand menu, choose Data. And under the full versions of the Pollock data, click on the National Election Study of 2008, and you'll be prompted to either open or save that data set. Choose Open, and that will open up a uh, version of SPSS. So today we'll be talking about ANOVA, which is short for Analysis of Variance. Like the t-test, ANOVA is a comparison of means test, meaning we are testing to see if the differences between sample means are statistically significant. But different than the t-test, ANOVA is appropriate if you have nominal or ordinal independent variables and inter interval or ratio dependent variables. And recall from last lab that the t-test is only for dichotomous independent variables, such as male and female, but what if your independent variable had more than two categories? For instance, perhaps the generational group to which someone belongs, such as baby boomers, Generation X, or millennial, is important in explaining attitudes toward government spending. It's certainly possible that Americans born at particular times share unique political values and experiences that shape their attitudes. However, using only a dichotomy, such as baby boomers or not, Generation X or not, would limit our ability to test the impact of generations on political attitudes. With ANOVA, you can compare means across more than two categories of your independent variable to assess whether several, and ran several random and independent samples are equal or whether their differences are equal to zero. So let's get started. So we've already opened up a copy of a uh, National Election Study of 2008. And since ANOVA requires an interval or ratio level dependent variable, let's select the variable called spend10. And let's run a frequency table on this variable uh, to get a sense of the distribution. So go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then choose Frequencies. And right click within the variable pane, sort by name, and alphabetize navigate down to spend 10, place that into the variable box, and click OK. All right, this variable is what's called an additive index. It adds each time that a respondent favors a government spending increase in a particular policy area. So there are 10 potential policy areas for which a respondent can either favor or not favor a spending increase. These 10 responses are then combined to form a scale from 0 to 10. For instance, if someone scores a 0, it means the respondent did not favor spending on any of the policy areas. And if they scored a 10, they favored spending on all of the spending areas. So if spend 10 is our dependent variable, what would help explain variation? Let's choose religious attendance, or the variable relig underscore attend three in the data set. This variable measures church attendance in three categories, high, medium, and low. And suppose we hypothesize that high church attenders are more likely on average to score lower on the spending index than medium or low church attenders. Or stated another way, we want to test the null hypothesis that no relationship exists between level of church attendance and support for spending increases. And remember that we're always interested in testing the null hypothesis that no relationship exists. So let's look at this relationship in SPSS. So navigate to Analyze in the top menu. We're going to go down to Compare Means and then down to one-way ANOVA. And alphabetize, sort your variables. And select the spend 10 scale and place that in the dependent list. And select the religious attendance in three categories independent variable and place that into the factor pane. And then click on options. So we want to get a description of the statistics for each one of these variables as well as 
running the ANOVA. So click on Descriptive and Continue and go ahead and run that analysis. Maximize your output window here. All right, so the first box in your output lists your descriptive statistics, so mean, standard deviations, confidence intervals. Your second box lists the results of your ANOVA calculation. So here we're looking for what's called an F statistic and its associated p-value. This may look like a lot of numbers to interpret, but rest assured you know what all of these mean. Recall from Professor Dangle's lecture videos, the F statistic requires the mean squares between and mean squares within, and each is found by dividing sum of squares for each by the degrees of freedom. Then taking the mean squares between groups and dividing it by the mean squares within uh, to calculate the F statistic. Recall that ANOVA tests whether the mean differences between all categories are statistically significant. Here we are given a p-value of 0.017, which exceeds our alpha of 0.05, or 95% confidence. So we can infer that these means do differ from each other. However, and very importantly, ANOVA cannot separate these means for closer analysis because it's a test of overall significance. For instance, we don't know what mean spending scores are statistically different among the three levels of church attendance. So to do this, we will run another ANOVA, and this time include what is called a post hoc correction to break down the relationship between each subsample mean in this overall relationship. This is a crucial step because it will tell us where the subsample means are statistically significant, or in other words, what is driving the overall test, uh, F-test statistic. So if the overall F-test gives you a significant relationship, like it did in our case, you will want to go back and determine which categories of your independent variable are significantly different from the other categories. To do so, repeat the ANOVA procedure above, except this time in the ANOVA window, click on the post hoc button. So minimize out of the output here. Go back to analyze and go down to compare means and over to one-way ANOVA. And conveniently, we already have our variables uh, in the appropriate panes. So select the post hoc option And then within this window, select Tukey. And then click Continue. And then click OK to run the test. And maximize the output window here. So the Tukey test essentially runs independent sample t-tests for all the combination combinations of subsample means in your relationship. This will allow you to see which mean differences are driving your results and to gain more insight into the relationship. So scroll down to the Tukey's comparison. The best way to read this analysis to, is to zero in on the p-values for each test between subsample means. Note that the difference between high attenders and low attenders with a p-value of 0 0.105 is not statistically significant, nor is the difference between middle and low attenders with a p-value of 0 0.374. The one significant relationship is between high church attenders and middle church attenders with a p-value of 0 0.021, which will give us a confidence level of more than 95% confidence. So based on the ANOVA test and the Tukey post hoc correction, we can reject the null hypothesis that no relationship exists between level of church attendance, our independent variable, and opinion on spending increases, our dependent variable. But even though we've rejected the null hypothesis, we cannot claim statistical support for our research hypothesis that was high church attenders would be more likely on average than lower medium church attenders to favor spending increases. Rather, middle church attenders are more likely than high church attenders to favor spending increases. Our next lab video will feature correlation and bivariate regression. 
be certain you do all the readings for correlation and bivariate regression, as well as watch the lecture videos before moving on to the next lab video.